Hey, good afternoon, guys. This is Ross WRNC518 slash WD4EHU. I'm also a ham radio operator. Uh, I'm out of um, Miami Dade County, Florida, the Sunshine State. And I'm bringing you this video, which is going to be the first video that I'm going to post in the uh, Octane Network. Since uh, Dane was so uh, grateful in allowing us to join his network. And uh, this is basically what I do in my spare time. I built uh, either ham, GMRS, commercial, digital, whatever, repeater since I've been in the business for uh, 32 years, just retired. So I've been around repeaters for a little bit with Motorola. And uh, I wanted to uh, show you guys uh, the build. This repeater, I believe, was born today. Today I finished it. I've been working on it for a couple days. This repeater I built for a friend who we met on a cello channel. I think it's called JMRS Live Radio something. Anyway, I'll post it on the comments so you can see. Uh, give him credit. Anyway, we met. We started talking and... Um, I told them that I build repeaters. As a matter of fact, I just finished building three uh, commercial repeaters for uh, public service. In the West Coast, as you know, we recently had a horrendous hurricane that took out so many lives and um, devastated our West Coast. Uh, so I got a call from a friend that used to work with me at Motorola requesting that I build something for them because a lot of equipment got damaged by uh, salt water. So I jumped in the wagon and uh, put those together real quick and sent them on their way so they can start uh, utilizing them. Anyway, this is a uh, GMRS repeater. As you can see, it has two Motorola. The models are MCS 2000s. They're super reliable radios. This is why I chose these radios. Uh, they're 50 watts. And I have them as continuous duty, which you guys know very well. There is no such thing as a continuous duty radio. Uh, but as, if you keep the uh, system cooled, it'll run forever. And I already ran a test on this one. I ran it for two hours continuous, and uh, it kept the only. I only lost three watts out of the PA. Anyway, without further ado, this, like I said, this is just two Motorola. MCS 2000 radio. This is a transmit radio and this is the receive radio and this repeater it's operating on the frequency of 462.55 and 46755 and this uh, repeater was custom built believe me it was custom built for a gentleman called Thomas Dukes. He's out of Lexington, South Carolina and uh, this is the WRJT772 repeater. Anyway, we've already seen the front. As you can see here, uh, this is a, uh, a switching power supply. And the top is a uh, full size, the largest size of the mobile duplexers. And once I get done with the build, I'm gonna create a video that is going to show the entire performance of the system. That way you guys can see how they perform. But anyway, this is a Fumei uh, duplexer. He provided it, so I still have to fine tune it, but we'll get to it. So anyway, this is what I had to do since the duplexer is so big, it was going to take most of the space on this 19 inch open shelf. So I decided, wait a minute, this is the first time I ever do this. This is a, uh, I put up the fourth uh, threader post, elevated the duplexer, and now underneath I was able to install the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the uh, switching power supply. And uh, I left enough space, as you, I don't know if you can see, there is the fan in there. So I realized, wait a minute, I can't put one on top of the other just like that, because how is the power supply going to breathe? Anyway, I must take it to the back. I had to mount these, uh, normally I mount them horizontal, but unfortunately due to the space, or the lack of it, 
I had to uh, mount them in a uh, vertical configuration. As you can see, uh, this is the back side of it. Uh, this is the uh, receiver. It's all wired and it's going into a uh, USB rim light. These are manufactured by Scott Zimmerman, repeater builder. And underneath is the Raspberry Pi, uh, 3B plus. And here, um, I decided to add this, which I've never added. I usually do this as a thermistor to actually turn on the, uh, the fan. But I decided to do something a little different. I decided to use the thermistor as a transmitter protection circuit. And I'll explain why. If you look in here, this relay, what it does is uh, turns on the fan or actually sends a signal to this uh, board. And this board has a timer that you can adjust to uh, from zero to 60 seconds. Uh, so you can keep the fan running after the transmitter stops. That way it continues to cool the heat sinks of the uh, PA side of the radio. Okay, so this does two things. Number one, uh, when this particular thermistor triggers at the set temperature, it sends a, as you see, the second leg is to ground. So it sends a signal, the green cable, triggers the relay, and as you can see on this side, those are the two, let me get this coax out of here. See, those are the two power cables. So basically what it does, it interrupts the DC power going to the uh, radio, this particular radio, the transmitter. So if the, let's say the fan fails, which it could happen, then when the thermistor senses high temperature, Sends the signal to the relay, the relay will trigger, remove power from the transmitter, and once the transmitter cools down, it'll start transmitting again. But at least it won't burn until the trustee realizes, wait, what's happening? My repeater's turning on and off. But anyway, that's, that's another video. And that's also the connection for the uh, uh, switching power supply. And underneath, you can see there, that is a 12 volts to three, uh, five, I'm sorry, 12 volt to three, the 12 volts to five volts, three amp power converter. And that's what's actually running the Raspberry Pi right there. So make sure you got plenty of juice when you run these Raspberry Pi, especially if you're adding them to an actual repeater. And like I said, in the second, uh, the second leg of the relay, this is a dual relay board that comes out of the radio side right here and that triggers the relay. So when the radio uh, gets the signal, then it triggers the fan. All right, I'm gonna turn up the, because uh, otherwise it'll turn off too fast. All right, let me grab my radio. And where's my radio? Oh, here's my radio. All right, so now I'm gonna transmit. You're gonna see the relay trigger, or actually go off, because it's right now it's on, and the fan will turn on. Okay, now the fan is on. Now, I am transmitting on my PTT, so the fan is running. The beauty of this is that when I stop transmitting, uh, the particular relay timer down here will keep the fan running up to 60 seconds. Well, you can change the settings on the dip switch and instead of seconds, it will convert it to hours. So, but we don't want to do that. There's no sense of running a piece of equipment for, you know, hours when seconds will cool down the heat sink. Now I'm going to unkey and the fan's going to still run because of the timer. When the time, time runs out. Hi. Welcome to the WRJT 772 GMRS repeater system located in beautiful Lexington, South Carolina and operating on the frequency of 462.55 megahertz. 
a proud member of the Octane Nationwide Radio Network. We welcome all licensed GMRS radio operator to join us. For more information, you may contact us via email at mygmrs.com. Have a wonderful day, please. Don't drink and drive. Okay, little public service announcement there. Yeah, the, the ID came on, so I just wanted to let it play uh, because I spoke to Dane and I mentioned that I that I learned how to do all those messages. You have unlimited languages. I mean, you can go through the list and you can probably do it in every language. And uh, I created one in Spanish and boy, that was, that was an eye opener. Everybody was calling me, how did you do that? So anyway, I'm gonna be posting, I'm gonna create a video at a later date and I'm going to show uh, how to do it because there's a lot of guys out there that don't know. I unfortunately had to uh, do a lot of digging. Nobody wanted to tell me how to do it. So you know what? I'm, a, I'm one of those uh, go-getter type of guys. I don't give up easy. The worst thing you can tell me is you can't do that or it can't be done. Uh, the two worst things you can tell me because you know I'm going to get on it. Anyway, so this is the duplexer, and the fan is right there, as you can see it, pointing right at the heat sink of the transmitter side. Uh, what else am I missing? Uh, no, that's about it. Uh, the next video I'll do, uh, that I will do, is for uh, the performance. I have, uh, let me show you the, uh, let me get away from the light of the window. WRNC 518 testing. Okay, that's the peak. That's my network spectrum analyzer. Very clean signal. Nothing, uh, no spurs, nothing around it. And on top I have my, uh, let me see if I can get a little closer. That's my uh, IFR 1200S spectrum signal generator, tracking generator, the whole works. Mm -hmm. But uh, this one I just purchased not long ago and I bought a uh, dual, dual channel oscilloscope that I have not turned on yet because uh, I like to spend time uh, on what I do. Anyway, that's basically it. So I will be posting this uh, soon on the Octane Network. Thank you guys for welcoming. Uh, our group is called The Outcast. Please don't ask. Just Take it as it is. I love the name. You guys have a wonderful weekend. God bless. Take care.